Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're going to look at Cardano plus look at the sluggishness of Bitcoin and Ethereum over the last couple of days. Where are we in the market at the moment? Plus a couple of other cryptos which I've got my eye on. So remember to hit that like button down below, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon. If you want to stake your Cardano with the, the Investor Accelerator staking pool, links are down below. The details you need are down there, so check that out. Plus follow me on Twitter and Instagram for daily Q&A updates. Milestones are getting crushed on the daily. Thanks once again, guys. 170,000 subs. Well, we do it all again. Let's go for 180 and potentially 200, even get to that quarter mil, 250. Currently the biggest in Australia, which is pretty cool. Biggest crypto channel in Australia. So thank you guys for getting us there. Yesterday, I put a video up, Crypto FOMO creates chaos and confusion. Now, it doesn't have the words urgent message or Bitcoin bull run reset, extreme fear in it, but I think this one has a lot of fantastic content in it, especially when it comes to our trades and looking at percentage returns versus uh, what we have currently seen in terms of losses as well. So if you wanna understand more about numbers, go and check out this video right here. Remember to like the video up as well. All right, let's have a look at the market caps update. Bitcoin, 700 billion. Ethereum, 300 billion. Binance, 54. Cardano, the one we're looking at primarily today is also nearly 54 billion. Now I'm checking these out again, just to give us a bit of a rundown where we are currently sitting. Today, we've seen a slight pullback, which is good. You know, we want to see the markets move up and then pull back. Overall, I think we're seeing some sluggishness and I'm like, like you know, I'm just preparing myself for the next one to three months if we don't see anything, any moves to new all-time highs. I'm completely okay with that. I am being patient. I'm not expecting Dogecoin 1300, 13,000% returns in the coming month. Okay, so as long as you're prepared for that, you're going to be okay. Hopefully those p p the P's are coming through all right with this little pop filter thing here, but I'll get a better one over the weekend. Cryptos, we have 10,000 to choose from. The markets are getting a little more complicated as we progress, as we begin to grow. And it's not as easy as 2017, but I want to make it easier, which is why I tend to stick to a lot of the big ones up here. Ethereum, Bitcoin, super easy, not the biggest gains. But if you want those big gains, then I like to play the patience game and look for things like Dogecoin when they have dropped 90, 99% and then buy in and just be patient and wait for these pumps to happen. Overall market cap, we're just short of 1.7 trillion. Remember our 50% zone, that's our uh, line in the sand between our bullish and bearishness, is at around 1.33 trillion. Looked at that yesterday. The fear is at 27. Yesterday was extreme at 22 and we got as low as 11. I think maybe we hit eight, but uh, historically, like we checked, around those levels of eight, 10, 11, seem to be great times in the market. Some of them, you might have to wait a year, other times very quickly. So keep that in mind as well if you are looking to uh, sort of buy the dips and dollar cost average in on the dips rather than every single day. That's the, the way I like to play it a little more because although I might have to wait longer, I'm gonna get a better average price in. If you wanna understand how those numbers work, go and check out yesterday's video. Just looking at uh, percentage returns, percentages off highs, how much a market has to move in order for you to get your money back, all that sort of good stuff. So Bitcoin is uh, what we have a look at just to get us a bit of a rundown from you know what the market's done over the last 24 hours. Basically nothing. <laughs> Yesterday up into new all-time highs. Today, well all-time highs, sorry, new fresh highs over the last five days. And then today we've just seen a little push down into these lows. Uh, so pretty much the market is just trying to figure out what it's doing and that's essentially what I'm expecting, which is why I like to buy it on these extreme fear days that we saw on the 19th. We had a live stream that day. And then again on the 23rd, another live stream, we can see that the market was trying to really, really, really squeeze down, but there was just nothing left. There, It couldn't give any more and we just didn't get to those low prices. So that's a good sign so far just to give us some sort of support in the market at the moment. Remember, our level was at 60,500 for a sentiment shift. And if we're applying those same Wyckoff method rules, then the next bar that is on our minds is the 19th of May. So the previous one was the 18th of April. That still stays here. But the 19th of May is the extreme fear, huge volume push down. 
So ideally, if we can get above that level, the, the, the key level there is 43,600. So we wanna to get to around 44, and then our 50% level is at close to 45. So if we get closes above 45K, puts us in a much, much stronger position, which isn't very far from us currently. So we just have to give up about 18% to keep us safe. That's the way I like to play the game because the riskier side is buying more here and then it falling further, which at the end of the day, I'm also happy doing, but a lot of people can't stomach a loss uh, once they've already bought in. But in terms of patience, this is the game I play, which is what we're gonna look at again on uh, Ethereum and also ADA. So currently Ethereum, similar sort of deal. If we can get above the bar that had the extreme shakeout, 3,400, so somewhere above, we get some closes above the 3,450 level, then we have basically wiped out all of the fear, all the people on that day who were fearful selling, and the sentiment shifts. So that's the line in the sand above that level there. Uh, apart from that, Ethereum, again, it's it's risen on uh, lowering, lowering volume, which I suspect we'll probably see some sort of pullback here into the mid-24s again. So I'm not rushing out for Ethereum, but in terms of Bitcoin, I like that. That's that's probably the play that I'm looking at most. And as you can see here, Ethereum, Bitcoin, it's also had a bounce. We've seen a lot of relief rallies at the moment, and we're just getting a little bit of resistance at the previous swing bottom, which then crashed the market. The market crashed that swing bottom, and we haven't been back above it since. So the volume is just a little low here. It is Bitfinex, so keep that in mind. But I suspect we'll probably see some sort of up and downs, uncertain movement with a lot of these cryptos at the moment, which is the sluggishness that I'm seeing. So Cardano USD, it's holding up a little better because we are closing above the old highs. Similar to ETH USD, it is above the old highs at the moment and the previous old highs, which is good, bounced off those. But uh, we're just a little higher uh, in uh, comparatively speaking to Ethereum, where we're sitting uh, much closer to our all time high. If we measure that at about 32% off. Uh, Ethereum's probably not that far off either. It's now sitting at 37%. So eight is slightly closer, and that's slightly po more positive. But anyway, the main thing here is we're sitting above our 50%. So remember that's the line in the sand, 50%, $1.26. Providing we continue to build support above the 50%, we're still in a bullish state. We just have to be patient. Ada ETH looks a little better. So that's what I was showing before. Cardano is looking a little stronger than Ethereum. So the returns may be a little bit better moving forward. This is not financial advice, it's not buy recommendations, it's just the way I'm reading the market. So chill your pants if you're out there just trying to make buy recommendations off every single video without having a damn plan. But uh, you guys are hopefully smarter than that. Now, we're looking at uh, Cardano, Ethereum, and just the strength here. So we have bounced off another support zone, which I have moved these lines around a little, and that support here at um, 37,000 is previous resistance back in June 2020 and then all this area through 2018 and 2019. So that's a pretty good sign that Cardano is is going to outperform Ethereum at least you know for this next stage of the bull cycle. That's what I've got my hopes on at the moment because of what I'm looking at here on the chart. Obviously a breakdown from that no good, no good. But right now, it is closing by 50% as well. So positive there, positive against Ethereum. Against uh, BTC, I'm not sure whether we're going to get a break out of these highs because as my view has been the from that top, from April, mid-April, when we got that crash through, consolidating. I'm consolidating into Bitcoin, some stable coins so I can buy things up at the lows, and then bigger projects which I'm more comfortable with, like Ethereum, in this case, uh, Cardano as well. Is Cardano going to outperform Bitcoin? I can't tell you for for sure, but I think that we may be on our last run here and we need some sideways accumulation at these high levels, stuff above 3,000 Satoshis. Uh, reason being is we potentially have five sections here. One, two, three, four, five, and then we just need some time to regroup to then go for our next leg up. We're still above 50%, which is at 2,745. Still still looking good. So it's all sort of leaning towards Cardano being in a stronger position than ETH and Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin is, for me, is still a good hold and uh, consolidating into with any other projects which tend to, which are bouncing on this relief rally. This is a conservative play. If you want to get your daily 100, 200%, again, that's not me. 
That's not me at this point. The way I have been playing the market was buying in 2019 and 2020 and then being patient for a year and a half, two years to get my 1,000, 1,500% returns. That's the way I play. So if you're here trying to gamble every day, good luck to you. But that's the way I look at the market. So Matic was uh, another gamble here, like I talked about in yesterday's video. There was no way I could have said that this would go 200% within three days. And I don't think that's a repeatable plan. But if you happen to buy at those levels, I think they're great. 80 cent Matic is good stuff. Uh, would you? Are you selling on that? I don't know. Are you going to watch it just fall all the way back down? If it falls back down to the 50% zone, you know, and then and then you're if you happen to buy it at 80 cents, then you're sort of up around 60 cent, uh, 60 percent. So you're not really any better off. All I'm saying here is, if you have a plan on how to pick these, uh, get your 200 percent in three days, and then get out. All the power to you. Go and create a YouTube channel and teach other people how to do that. Uh, I just don't see a repeatable plan here, but I'm happy for the people who are actually banking profits, not just talking about the returns that they could have had. So Matic overall, I like the project. It's fantastic. It's got a reason to be here. It's looking good. Maybe this thing shoots well, like hella high. You know, maybe there's going to be a short squeeze on it because there's just so much, uh, so much shortage on the markets. So I, I don't know. You know, I'm just throwing ideas out there. Maybe this thing booms. I just don't have a repeatable plan is all I'm saying here for Matic. Now, on to other projects which I like the look of a little better because they are at lower levels, which is the game that I play. I like to buy in these zones. Uh, Monero. Monero, I don't know if I'm going to get massive gains on this, but I just like it as the project. I like the privacy, the anonymity of it. It's at lower levels, which I'm more comfortable with. I don't like buying on peaks like Matic. I just I can't bring myself to buy this thing at $1.30 and only hope to get $2.60, just hope to get 100% or 200%. You know, I want these things low. And uh, Monero on BTC Val is pretty damn low. It's at its all time lows, but it has a nice move out of these low levels and it's on the dump. It just came back to hit those old highs. So I like that. I love it. It's just um, sitting on or hitting old. Uh, which that was resistance, so it's, it's sitting on the support. It's become support, which hit resistance. That's a good sign for me. We've closed up a little higher. If we bring out our Fib tool, anchor to the lows, anchor to the tops, we're now sitting above the 50%. We're sitting above an old support zone, so we've broken through that again. The dump closed above that zone. There's just a lot of things going on here which I really like. And again, I am going to be very patient with this. None of these things are huge chunks of my portfolio, but uh, they're areas or these, these are sort of patterns that I am far more comfortable with and I have the patience. So, you know, it could happen that you just go basically up 100% and it takes a year and then nothing happens. It just dumps. This dump was based on Monero getting um, delisted from a lot of exchanges and now it's still delisted, but it's climbing back to these levels that it was while it was still on exchanges. So that to me says there's a lot of strength in it uh, just based on that fundamental factor. I wouldn't say alone, but it's a pretty strong fundamental factor to say that the market, Monero was here, then it had a whole lot of news out in, if you look in October, that it was getting delisted from major exchanges. It dumped, accumulated again, broke out, dumped, couldn't get back to these lows on more fearful news. And it's still not back on those exchanges, yet it's back at these similar prices. That's a good sign to me. That's a very good sign. So I can be patient of this. It could take three months, six months, 12 months, two years. I don't care. I like buying in low. That's my game. Last one is Torn. So this is Tornado Cash, which has another good uh, reason to be in the crypto space. This is making your transactions with Ethereum or holding your ETH, making them anonymous. And uh, I like that aspect, the privacy aspect of cryptocurrency. This one's at major lows, major all-time lows against its USD uh, pricing. So it's at 50 bucks a torn. Again, you don't have to buy a full torn. You can buy fractions of it. Uh, this isn't to say that we're going to shoot up directly from here, but my strategy is buy low and sell high. These are low prices. I see volume support here. Sure, it could go down further, just like this was volume support. It went sideways and broke down again. But I just see this as big ranges just starting to flatten out. So that's why I like uh, I like Torn. Again, it's not a big part. It's just a small trade here. Uh, just to 
go with my plan, buying low, seeing some volume, seeing some patterns that I enjoy, that I like, that I have seen work more often than not. Doesn't mean they're gonna work 100% of the time, but I just go with the probabilities. Do your research, do your fundamental research, do your technical research. I think we're gonna have time at the moment because the markets will probably, you know, it's my view anyway, that we might go a little bit uh, sideways for a period, maybe some bursts up and down, but I don't think we're gonna get a clear run on just yet, especially after such huge, uh, huge moves down and we did have an even bigger move down than we saw from the top so that's my look over the next couple of months I'm gonna keep it keep with these uh, you know checking the charts obviously letting you guys know on the daily make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that like button I'll give you a second go and do that right now Bell notification icon so you can be updated with the content this one's a little shorter for you hopefully the sound has come out really nice if it hasn't I'll use a sock next time as I said, like the video and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'll see you guys over there. Uh, you've got SwiftX, Binance, lots of links down below to be able to, to trade and track your portfolio. So check all of those links out. Remember the Cardano staking pool uh, details are down below as well. Just follow those and stake your Cardano from that point. We have won our first block and our second block now. We're looking pretty good over there. Check it out. Catch you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done. <laughs>